Smarl and the Caster here with a how to DPS video. Um, this is going to be a little series that I start, at least for a couple of my characters. I have about seven 120s or so. And so I'm going to kind of play them as I go and uh, make videos about how to DPS, tank, or heal with them. If you guys like, end up liking this series, I'll level up more characters and try and get a review of every single spec in class possible. Um, but without further ado, we're going to be starting with the Destruction Warlock on my character. After the namesake of my channel, Smorlin. Smorlin the Caster. So, we'll first start off uh, on Icy Veins, which is over here. <clears throat> so, we'll first be starting with um, build, uh, Builds and Talents, Azurite Traits, Rotation and Cooldown, and then lastly we'll be doing Gems and Enchants, because um, that is also important. We won't be going over gear and best in slot because this is just how to play, not necessarily what you need to do best DPS in, uh, in a sense of, uh, I, I don't feel that gear and best in slot is necessary for this video. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's go down to talents and kind of go through what um, what, Icy, uh, what Icy Veins has. Um, I use Icy Veins, some people use Noxic. I don't, I, don't, I don't know which one's better. I think Icy Veins is better. Um, I pretty much follow this pretty much down to a T. Um, I do kind of uh, deviate a few spots, and you'll see where and why. Um, I'm sure Icy Veins knows more than I do, but I the way I made my build feels more natural and comfortable to play than the way the cookie cutter is out of Icy Veins. Um, so with uh, so we'll go through each of the talents, and uh, we'll kind of go through Icy Veins. Go through what they have here, and then um, we'll go through my talents, and I'll explain the difference in, in that. So, <clears throat> depending on if you're going to be like AOE or um, single target, I think single target, they, they recommend flashover over eradication. Flashover um, grants you an, an, an additional backdraft, which increases your, uh, I think, haste by like 20% on incinerate and um, chaos bolt. And then eradication um, increases the damage you do to the target after your chaos bolt hits by 10%. So that means your immolate, your um, what is it? Com not combustion. Um, conflagate, incinerate. All your spells increase by 10%. So I went with eradicate as it just added a debuff to the target. Even though this is technically better for AOE, I went for it for kind of just all around. Um, I also went with, um, I think I went with uh, internal combustion. We'll go through that later. But um, Icy Veins recommends reverse entropy, which has a, um, a chance to grant you 15% haste, <clears throat> where internal combustion um, consumes your immolate. And uh, so let's say your immolate is, I think, 20 seconds long, and, you, and your chaos bolt hits. It consumes five seconds of that dot and applies that as single damage. So imagine the, f the five ticks it would take for Immolate, combine those up, and then add it on top of whatever your Chaos Bolt damage is. So that's why Internal Combustion is pretty good. Um, I ended up actually going with Internal Combustion, um, but again, we'll go through the, my talent tree later. Um, I go with Burning Rush. I think this is a very useful talent. Um, it burns you down while increasing your run speed. This is very good for running the flag and stuff, because um, especially if you have like potions and other types of healing. This is really good for PvP because you can grab the flag or grab something and then just burn down the field. Demon Skin is just adds protection to you and Dark Pack essentially uh, sacrifices your pet. So these two, Demon Skin and Dark Pack, are more survivability, where Burning Rush is more, uh, which is more mobility. So I went with Burning Rush because other than that, Warlocks don't really have too much mobility except for the portal. <clears throat> The next row, your level 60 talents, is Cataclysm, Fire and Brimstone, and Inferno. I um, I went with Cataclysm. Um, I, I liked being able to do um, damage plus um, give everyone Immolate. Um, Fire and Brimstone is also a viable option, um, which has all your, um, inc all your incinerates hit... Um, all targets nearby for only 40% of the damage. So it's really good. I, I would say this is pretty good for Mythics and AoE burning. Because every time you cast Immolate, it hits all the targets within your main target. 
where Cataclysm hits all, you know, essentially it's just an AoE, it hits all your targets and applies Immolate to all of them. Um, I, from my understanding, Inferno is just that 20% doesn't outweigh the amount of damage you get from these two. That's why uh, Inferno is not recommended in this uh, town tree. And then uh, your seven, level 75 uh, town tree is nothing damaging. It's all mobility slash healing slash stuns. So it's more like your PvP talent row. Dark Fury stuns all the people um, right then, right in your little uh, AoE circumference. Mortal Coil is essentially Death Coil if you ever played like Classic or Vanilla all the way up to whenever they removed it. I forget when they removed it. Um, it's an insta cast, hits the target, makes them run. And heals you for about 20%. So it's a it's an insta cast fear plus hellstone. Um, and then there's demon circle, which um, teleports you and stuff. Um, and when doing so, removes all of your deb uh, movement debuffs. Your level 90 um, row is going to have roaring blades, uh, grim grimoire, whatever how you pronounce it, of supremacy, and of sacrifice. Um, Rolling Blaze uh, burns the target, uh, so when you use Conflagate, it also applies a, D, uh, a, a dot over uh, a dot. So uh, if you pair this up with Immolate, you'll, your dots will then include Immolate and Rolling Blaze, or you know the debuff that actually that talent causes. This one is uh, depending on which kind of mode you go. Um, supremacy, um, increase your Chaos Bolt gets increased by every Soul Shard you spend during your Infernal Activeness. So, depending on how you want to structure your character for um, burst damage or kind of just not so bursty but overall um, steady damage, you'll be kind of going between these two. Um, based off what I've been reading, this one's kind of useless. It just um, when you sacrifice your pet, you get a, um, a spell that deals like 35% of the damage. Uh, I don't know exactly what this does, but I've read it doesn't uh, um, help with the DPS. We'll go through Icy Veins and we'll read exactly what that one does. Um, and then depending on what you do up here uh, in the upper talents kind of dictates what you do here. So when I was talking about um, that, <clears throat> that burn phase, you're going to want Dark Soul Instability and pair that with Grim Grimoire of Supremacy. Uh, instability will increase your critical strike chance by 30%. And so if you tag that on with all the soul shards spent, so whatever 8 times 5 is, which I think is 40, you can have your Chaos Bolt do 40% more damage and crit, and then increase that critical strike chance by 30 on top of what you already have. Um, I could be wrong on the, the actual numbers, but um, imagine critting a already supercharged um, Chaos Bolt, and then you have that with um, Bane of Havoc, you can do some massive damage. Some, some You can pretty much delete some people out there. So these two pair up very well. Uh, then you have Channel Demon Fire, which is essentially a, um, a, a Warlock's... Uh, what the hell is it called? Arcane Bolts. That's what this is, kind of like an Arcane Bolt move. It, you know, it doesn't work exactly like it, but that's the way I kind of see it. And then Soul Conduit, it's a nice passive, which has a chance to, every time you're, you know, um, using a Soul Shard in your Reign of Fire or um, Chaos Bolt, it has 15% chance of refunding that one Soul Shard, or a Soul Shard. <clears throat> so we'll go through what I have, and I can kind of compare it to this, and I'll explain why I chose what I did. So here I have Eradication. So I, um, I have Eradication because the way I wanted to set my Warlock up was I wanted to have a decent burst, while having a steady moderate damage. So with without, I don't have to pop cooldowns. My character can pretty much maintain a solid DPS and then get a little bursty throughout the fight uh, whenever I need to use my Infernal. So that's why I chose Eradication as opposed to Flashover because I didn't, I didn't want to have the faster gameplay. I wanted more of a, I didn't want to have a bursty character. I wanted to have a steady character. Um, and then Internal Combustion. Um, this is the, neither of these two are okay, viable uh, for your build. I did internal combustion because it made, makes your um, chaos bolt even more powerful, and this would even actually pair very well with the Rimor of Supremacy and Dark Soul. Uh, so if you t um, have this toggled while your infernal's out, this is I think would be a very good pair because now um, 
your Chaos Bolt will be doing, you know, potentially five times that because it stacks, if I'm not, um, because you have five Soul Shards. So this, I think it goes up to five, maybe even more soul, uh, stacks, depending on how you man manage your Soul Shards. So you can um, buff your Chaos Bolt, then crit with your Chaos Bolt, and then cash out on five seconds of your emulate all at one time. That could be some big dick damage right there. So that this is a good pairing with the, uh, the this and these two. Um, Burning Rush, like I said, I, I PvP a lot in this character. Um, I've just been PvPing with him. Oh, what's that? I've been PvPing with him for about you know two weeks or so, and I already got 3,600 kills. Um, so that's why I Burning Rush. Here, um, this one is a no go. Do not choose Infernal. Um, we'll, we'll go back why uh, and read that on IC Veins. Um, I went with Cataclysm, like I said earlier. Uh, just gives a decent AoE plus applies um, Immolate. So instead of just casting, because um, Incinerate doesn't do much damage. So I'm not, I don't really want to have a weak spell do only 40% to all targets. I'd rather hit him with a, a, a nice nuke damage plus then infect or um, apply a dot to all of them. I think that will do more DPS over time, especially for... Um, uh, AoE plus this pairs decently again with internal combustion because since Cataclysm does apply Immolate, I don't have to cast Immolate, so therefore if I do Cataclysm, I can then also just follow up with Chaos Bolt and delete them. Um, since I do PvP, um, I just I thought Mortal, Co Mortal Coil, I, I played better with it. That's why I, uh, I went with it a little bit more than Demon Circle. I tried both of them. And I just enjoy the gameplay of Mortal Coil, especially with using Burning Burning Rush, because you're you're draining one percent of your, or four percent of your health every second. So this can buy you an extra um, five seconds. So if you you know hit your target, you can fear them. So that w now one, they're off your tail, and then two, you got twenty percent of your health. And then as you're Burning Rush, you can also smack your Hellstone, get an extra quarter of your health. Um, so you can keep running. It, it buys you an extra 10, 15 seconds of your life to run. So that's why I kind of go with Mortal Coil. Also go with Roar, uh, uh, Roaring Blaze over the other two because um, I don't want to be too bursty so this will just apply a dot over time. That's what essentially dot means, damage over time. So I'll put, I like this because I like to maintain dots on the character, uh, on the target. So with Cataclysm you know, I have Immolate always active and then I'm always following up my Chaos Bolt, usually depending on my Soul Shard management I usually follow up my Chaos Bolt with a, uh, with a Conflagate because now that dot um, is energized by 10% with Eradication. So that's why I kind of went with these two. <clears throat> and then I'm not a big fan um, of trying to manage cooldowns. I always try and be too conservative with cooldowns and that's why I'm not good with it because I sometimes may dump it too early or too late or whatever. So I like just playing a passive game where I can just cast my spells and not worry. Luckily, Soul Conduit is a viable option over Dark Soul. Uh, so with, Con with Soul Conduit, when using anything that uses Soul Shards, you have a 15% chance of refunding a Soul Shard. So there's times where you can chain Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt, especially with Infernal Active. And I think Soul Conduit has made the gameplay, for at least for Destruction Warlock, a very viable option if you don't want to be Mr. McBursty. So that is uh, Talent Trees. Um, we can go through PvP Talents uh, um, at a later time. I'll, I'll kind of go through them. I, I deviated, I think, decently well from Icy Veins. Because PvP Talents, I choose my gameplay style. And I think that's what most people should. I'm sure there's you know some numbers, which means others are better than others. But I play, a game, I play my game a little bit differently. So I chose um, different spells and... Um, we'll go through this at a later time, but let's go back over to Icy Veins <clears throat> and go through um, Azurite traits for gear. I know this might be a little bit difficult because of I don't have the gear to show you, but we'll at least start with the Outer Rings and then go throughout. I'll explain why um, priority, at least from what I do, because some of the some of these do apply to. Um, Dark Soul, I ch you'll choose other ones. So let's first start with Flashpoint. Um, Flashpoint, uh, what does Flashpoint do again? 
Uh, when your uh, immolate uh, hits somebody over 80% health, which is quite often in boss fights, you gain an extra haste buff. Um, I don't know which ones of these stack. Um, what, what, it, what is nice about Warlock um, Azurite traits is most of them are useful over the generics. We're kind of like, you know, a Death Knight, at least a Blood Death Knight. The Azurite traits that come with the class are, are trash and are should always pick over a, like a a generic race uh as right trait over the class trait um pretty much your biggest ones are gonna be flashpoint and cra uh, crashing chaos this pretty much helps you delete people um and then the rest of them just kind of wherever they fall um because this when you're um this really pairs up with dark soul very well because when you summon your infernal each time you cast chaos bolt it reduces the cooldown of your infernal which is necessary to that burst build and also increases the damage of your Chaos Bolt by 110, but I mean, that's just a stock text. It, it's increased at the higher level. Um, but either either build cr uh, Crashing Chaos is necessary for Destruction Warlock. Um, so pretty much these two are going to be your most important ones, Flashpoint and Crashing Chaos. Uh, let's go over to... We'll, we'll hit Rotation last, actually. Let's go over to Gems, and uh, then we'll... This kind of will do gems and stat priority at the same time uh, because it kind of tells you what you need to do. Um, where is... Oh, here we go. Here are the enchants you'll need. Um, enchant Ring of Mastery. Um, mastering, I, if, my, if I remember correctly, Mastery increases your damage, just pretty much your straight up damage. Um, and then you're going to want, you know, uh, Enchant Weapon with Brilliance because that will increase uh, one of your... Uh, one of your uh, what the hell is traits or uh, up to 264. So that so these are what you would need. Just kind of basic icy veins. There's not too much, not much deviation. These apply to all talent trees and all builds. So even I think all talents, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll just we'll head over to um, stat priority real quick, wherever that may be. Uh, where is stat priority? I forget. Oh, there it is. Right next door. If I was, it was sneaking, it would bit me. So you want essentially mastering haste co um, back to back because haste increases your, you know, your your dot rate, um, your cooldowns increases the cool, you know, the, how fast cooldowns speed up, so on and so forth. Critical strike does come second, and then these two are useless. I mean, they're here, but they're useless. Uh, so any gear that has mastery and or haste will be prime, and then critical strike comes second. As you'll see, a lot of my gear has that. So we'll we'll jump back over to my character. We'll go through my gear real quick and kind of show you, um, you know, my stats and mastery and stuff. So as you see here, my mastery is 44%. Um, what mastery does, I'll, I'll just read it right here. Your spells deal 22% more damage plus a random amount up to 22% in additional damage. And I take 4.9% reduced damage. Um, so... Pretty much increases your damage, and and then randomly you can get double your amount of damage. The way that's the way I read it. I could be completely wrong. Um, and then and then haste just it's attack speed. But you see a lot of my gear have all oh, this. Um, these are just uh, the Azurite traits. Uh, we'll go through that once we go focus more on the character instead of icy veins. Um, but just as you can see, you know, it's critical strike haste. This one increases your haste uh, over 30 seconds. This one's Critical Strike Verse. Versatility is useless. This one's Verse useless, but it does have Mastery. Um, this one also has Versatility. A lot of a lot of gear has Versatility. I don't know why, but here here's one where it's Haste and Mastery. So this is a, this is a good item where it has both. Uh, you want to try and have both as much as possible. I just picked this up this ring actually today. So that's why it doesn't have a gem in it yet. But Critical Strike Mastery, and then uh, we have Haste, Gem, we have the, and then um, we have the Use Ability, which is, you know, for me, it just gives me an extra dot, or, um, yeah, do another dot. And then I have a Mastery Trinket plus Haste, and then I can increase my Intellect, which increases my damage. So, I mean, that's my gear. It's nothing, nothing too special. I'm not up there. I mean, this was decent in 8.2, but now it's 8.3. I'm a little out of date. I got to upgrade a little bit more my Death Knight. Has got much better, but besides the point. So let's go to rotation.
on icy veins and then we'll go back to my once we finish this on um on icy veins we'll just stay in world warcraft um and my rotation will change a little bit but be, as you can see here we have all of these different choices which will change your rotation so we have at least on my character we have eradication cataclysm and um we have this one that essence so like it just kind of gen generic you just maintain your um, immolate uh when you first start off battle you should always have if you're not coming right out of battle you should have three soul shards so the first thing you should do is bounce a chaos bolt um Chaos Bolt is either when you cap or beginning a fight because you have, since you have three and this only costs two. But when you apply this with Eradication, we're getting a 10% uh, damage increase. So when you apply all your dots, you're getting 10% more return on your dots. So that's why Chaos Bolt's always second, if possible. Um, and then let's uh, Concentrated Flame, which would be, at least for me, that's the essence that I'm using, and this applies a dot plus damages them. So this, I think this is affected by the 10%, I, but don't quote me on that. Uh, and then, pretty much, it's a balance, and then uh, it's pretty much a balance between maintaining your soul shards and your chaos bolts, and then you can burst when you want to burst. That's uh, so why it's conflagate and then chaos bolt. Pretty much just keep the the eradication, but since if you're expecting eradication, keep that buff up if you can. Um, and it's a very easy rotation as a, as you see here to generate soul shards to generate soul shards um when you're about to cap use it when you're about to cap use it so um it's a fairly easy um rotation and then let's just go back to warcraft and i'll just kind of show you on this target dummy we'll just go to the one i usually use the training one uh we'll reset the, we'll see if i can reset this I really don't know how. There we go. Reset. <clears throat> I always use the Fell Hunter pet. Uh, find it the most useful. Um, I'm just let my Soul Shard recharge. I think so. When I was reading online, the the, um, the Fell Hunter and the Succubus do I think the same amount of DPS. Uh, and I I don't, I don't use the imp. I don't know what the fuck he's for. If he's more useful and you all and you guys tell me, yo, the the imp's better, I'm gonna be thoroughly impressed and shocked. I'll probably change it over, but as of right now, I use Fell Hunter. So, anyways, without further ado, let's uh, target this target dummy. I'm hoping I'm hoping I can burst up to 25 or 30 thousand DPS at this item level. I'm hoping to maintain between 16 and 20. Um, those are the metrics that I like to keep, and we'll see if I can get up in there. Um, that would definitely scale depending on what your gear, I, you know, your item level is and what your gear have. You know, I'm also missing a gem, so keep bear that in mind. But um, those are those are the numbers I'm shooting for, and if they're a little low, let me know. But I think at 4:30, that bursting between 25 and 30 is a pretty good number, and then just maintaining, I would say 16 to 20, 22 would be a good number too. So uh, let's uh, we'll open up with a. Debating on opening up with a burst or opening up normal and then bursting later. So let's just we'll open up with a burst. So let's do that. So let's cast that, and then um, let's get a chaos bolt on there. I messed up a little bit. I've already um, used <coughs> conflagate when I didn't need to. So as you can see, I used chaos bolt. I was able to use chaos bolt again because. I already had um, that that um, refund on it, the soul conduit. But now which, um, I can I'm gonna apply immolate first, and then I'm, now I can kind of start roasting them a little bit more. I use kind of cat, cat, cataclysm off cooldown if possible. It does a, a decent amount of damage. As you can see, I'm already at 32,000. We're gonna apply another immolate, an insta cast, and now another flagate to get another dot. And then we're going to uh, hit him with the uh, Chaos Bolt. I probably should turn off the volume because you may hear some double volume. If you do, I'm sorry about that. So now, right now, so this is where the lull of the combat would be. Um, I, I'm just building Soul Shards up. That's where the DPS will kind of drop off a little bit. So now let's apply Immolate again and then just 
use uh, incinerate to just keep to um, keep up developing stuff and then so with the stacks of conflagate there's no reason to hold on to them just use both of them if there's one up use it if there's two up use it you use it as a soul shard builder so don't worry about not having it um it's not like a critical move it's just it's a soul shard builder see i'm using both i mean if you want to uh, you may get a little bit more dps if you use it um let's say you have two of them you use it in between um and incinerate because the dot is pretty quick it expires in six seconds so you could do um so i'm sorry i'm talking to you so i'm, I'm already over capped on my shards but what you could do is you could um conflagate and then incinerate incinerate conflagate again to maintain your debuffs up so let's uh Sometimes I like to build up to four or two, because since since I have Soul Conduit, I try and hit them. Depending on where I'm at in combat or what buffs I have going on, I will try and hold on to them until I have four uh, four Soul Shards, so I can do a double hit, and then as you can see, I go back up. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll just do it three because three I can always then make the option if I need to use Rain of Fire or continue on with. Um, Chaos Bolt, and then I can potentially refund it and do a two cast. So, yeah, this is where I'm at. So, I'm within the numbers that I wanted to be at. Uh, I messed up a few times um, just because I was talking to you guys. I'm kind of looking at my spell bar as opposed to debuffs. So, I watched Emily fall off a few times. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Um, Emily should always be up, because, especially with this build that I have, because Emily gets consumed. So it's going to be, have to be reapplied a lot more, kind of like sunscreen, <laughs> during summertime. So you're going to have to keep reapplying MLA, especially with this this talent build and as opposed to burning. So what I have, uh, this should, I'm going to just try and cap over to four. Uh, I was going to try and cap to four soul shards, but we're going to hit two. And then use it again. What is nice is eradicate does affect um, chaos bolt. So eradicate, uh, if you already have eradicate, your chaos bolt will do up to 10% more damage. Uh, we'll do one more burst sesh, a little burn sesh, and then um, I'll call it, uh, and we'll kind of review what's going on. So let's do, okay, I'm at the four. Let's start, uh, we'll start bringing the hammer down on Chaos Bolt. We'll do two Chaos Bolts, um, a Cataclysm, a Conflagate, and then we'll burn it down with Chaos Bolt again. Because Chaos Bolt, uh, see, it's 70,000 crit, and now we're going to apply another Immolate. Another um, conflagate because that you know dots do increase damage. I want to follow up another four chaos bolts. That's why this, and it, uh, in between this chaos bolt, we're trying to throw a dot in there, and that's why this this builds a fucking big dick. So in PvP, you can um, and we'll just go through my PvP talents real quick. So we're gonna pull off the dummy. Well, we'll leave the guy on there. Um, let's bring my guy back. Okay, so with um talent trees so with what i chose here is i did a, a adaption i didn't want to have to maintain a, a, a trinket and cooldown um in my bar i didn't want to have to be an extra button to push so i went with adaption so as soon as i the first sight of uh crowd control instantly take, comes off fell fissure uh, i did this because when you hit somebody with your chaos bolt which is all the fucking time you put something under their feet, reducing their speed by 50%, and all the healing healing received to the targets within Fell Fissure up to 25%. Uh, or not up to, just by 25%. And this lasts for about six seconds. So when you hit them with your Chaos Bolt, um, depending on what kind of build you do with Focus Chaos, or another one which I kind of go back and forth on, depending on which battlegrounds I'm going through, this is very useful either way, though. Um, this one's pretty interesting. Um, it's a root ability, and that is spawned off your conflagate. So if uh, your conflagate will root somebody for three seconds per charge. So you can potentially root somebody up for six seconds and then fear or charm them. So it gives you a little bit extra CC. Especially, It's very good when running the flag because if someone's behind you, you can do one of these little jump maneuvers. So you can be you know run in this way and then jump, conflagate, and then keep running. You'll stun the target, and it gives you a three-second you know way to escape. Focus Chaos. This is probably one of the most overpowered, in my opinion, 
um, abilities, especially during leveling up. If you do war mode, you can one-shot stuff at level 110, 120. It's ridiculous. So what Focus Chaos does is it increases your Chaos Bolt up to 65% damage. So imagine having Focus Chaos, also with Eradication, with Internal Combustion, plus the Azerite traits of like Crashing Chaos, which increases the Chaos Bolt by X amount. All of the stuff. I've critted in Battlegrounds for about 120, 130 DP uh, hit at 430. I think gear's normalized, but essentially you delete people in PvP. If someone's running the flag and you, you're able to get a Chaos Bolt off, you're going to put them in a hurt. It's a very solid move. And so Destruction Warlocks are very powerful in PvP. And I think they're quite powerful in PvE as well. They're, if I Last I checked, they're about 7th in place. Uh, for DPS overall in raids. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'd keep crashing, or what's it called? Focus Chaos is insane in PvP, so I would recommend doing this. But if not, the one I was going to tell you about that also works is replace Entrenched Flame with Bane of Havoc and move Focus Chaos to really, or actually, just remove Focus Chaos to Bane of Havoc. So what you do is Bane of Havoc right now it's just Havoc. When you put Havoc on somebody, it becomes Bane of Havoc, and Bane of, ha um, Bane of Havoc actually becomes an... I'm screwing up, sorry about that. <laughs> Bane of Havoc becomes a drop on ground AoE, kind of like this. And everybody in there, in that circle, gets Havoc applied to them. So what you can do, and this is when we're doing Korax Revenge, I would do this, is I would apply Cataclysm, Havoc, and then Chaos Bolt them. Because with Bane of Havoc and Immolate on, the, 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 the Chaos Bolt would hit everybody in there and also consume five um, five ticks of Immolate because of internal combustion. If you have two of these, what also works is if you're going big dick and you want to take out an entire group of people by yourself, you do that with Summon Infernal and now you have even more expendable Chaos Bolts and then you also have Shadow Fury, so you can stun them in place. So you can really manage as many people as you want, as long as you can, as long as you don't get interrupted. It's most likely you're going to, but in Korax Revenge, when there's 40 people, nobody knew who was attacking who. This combo destroyed more people than I can, I've done in any other PvP round. During Korax Revenge, one of my highest kills was nearly a thousand people um, in Korax Revenge. Then again, we were turtling for about two hours, so that would explain it. But even then, this combo deleted people. Um, but outside of that, when you're doing small battlegrounds, you want to want Focus Chaos. Um, this is better for the smaller, non-epic, I guess what they're called. Um, the epic battlegrounds, anything smaller, you're going to want Focus. Because you're more on one-on-one, -on -one, one on two encounters. So That's what I would do. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully that helps anybody who's thinking about being a destruction warlock. Of the warlocks, you know, I have, I do have to say, I've played Demonology, Affliction, and Destruction. And Destruction has been by far my favorite. So I really do hope, uh, if anyone's thinking of jumping, uh, jumping to Destruction, I really recommend it. I think Affliction does a little bit more DPS, but I really could not get into it. I was not, uh, I wasn't vibing with it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, though. Uh, like I keep saying, I hopefully this helped anybody who's thinking of jumping the fence over onto um, the destruction side. Um, if not, uh, hope you may you know, hopefully you just go ahead and subscribe, and because I may make a video you know concerning your character. Um, I do promise these videos will get a little bit better. I'm still you know coming up with new software and stuff, but and editing techniques and whatnot, and better audio. I hope. <laughs> but in the meantime. I uh, hope you guys, one last time, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I try and have videos up Monday, to, or uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday uh, late at night. Uh, so hopefully I'll keep that uh, moving on, moving forward. This is a new channel, Smoral and the Caster, and I am out of here. Thank you for watching.